everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video we are in the final month of 2021 am i glad that 2021 is over yes am i looking forward to 2022 i'm not quite sure yet because the way you know we've got we've got covid megatron you know we've got transformer covid in the building and look the way things are looking right now it's a bit tricky but anyway i am here today to film some of my favorite videos of the year and these are the top 10 or top five top anything my favorites in terms of beauty in terms of books as you can see if you're watching this video right now and you can see to my left uh in terms of books and all of that and uh, all the lovely things that i enjoyed in the year 2021 so really really excited gonna start with the book one because that one is the one that's closest to my heart really truly 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 um and also i'm going to move on to the other ones as the day progresses you're gonna see it in two different or three different videos but that's that's neither here nor there have you subscribed to the channel if you have please do join the jk family i would love it if you did uh we are almost at twenty five thousand subscribers i was hoping that we would close the year at twenty five thousand subscribers i day but uh, it's it's a tall order but it's not an impossible one so please if you are watching and you're not subscribed to the channel please do me that favor and subscribe join the family i really would appreciate that and for the book lovers let's get into the video right so i'm really really excited about this because i love me books and you know that i love me books i share my books in all my vlogs and every time i am recording there is always a book in my vlog you guys know this i may not have quite reached my goal for the year i think i'm about hmm, four or five books shy i've actually lost count at this point and my goal count was 30 books but i'm fine i'm fine i've read quite a lot this year um just the latter part of the year was a little bit tricky for me with everything that was going down in life and all of that but it's fine we're okay we're okay we read the books we don't read the books it's not the end of the world right now, i've got nine here and i wrote 10 in my I've got nine here, but I wrote 10 in my list and I know the one that is not here. I'm not sure if I read it in December or January. That That is why. That is why. But we're going to get into it. Let's get into the first video. I mean, let's get into the first book. Now, there's no order of importance or order of how I read them. These are my top 10 favorite books of this year. These are the books that made me go, yo, 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 yo. Or, <laughs> or, oh my God, or, oh my God, the writing here is amazing, or whatever. Th these are the books that just made me laugh out loud. These are the books that were so entertaining, uh, kept me on the edge of my seat. Like, these are the books. These are the books. The first one is definitely one that I spoke about in a couple of vlogs ago, and I loved it. This is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. I've spoken about this in a vlog of mine or whatever, so I'm not going to get into too much detail about these books because I speak about them right throughout the year. So watch my content, then you'll know. Loved okay. this book. This book kept me at the edge of my seat. This book, I could not put it down. This is a chunky one, okay? This is a chunky mind. This, uh, this book follows the life of Claire, who has a sister, Julia, who went missing while Claire, when Claire was younger. And now the book is very, very graphic. The book, wow. The trigger warnings for this book are actually shocking. I really think you should look at trigger warnings for this because there's trigger warnings for abuse, there's trigger warnings for child pornography, there's trigger warnings for uh, mental health, there's trigger warnings for suicide. There is a lot, a lot that goes on to, into this chunky monkey, but it is perfectly perfectly written it's crime writing at its best i'm not even gonna lie to you somebody says this crime writing at its finest so it follows the life of claire who is now grown and she's got a husband by the name of paul or scott paul and i think his surname is scott and um so they're living this really lovely life until something happens at the beginning of the book where it flips everything upside down and because of that Claire gets introduced to a life that she didn't know her husband lived which is uh, shocking and in that in so doing 
a girl goes uh, missing in the town that Claire is lives in and therefore Claire decides to actually unearth what happened with her sister when she was growing up and how everything interweaves and how everything comes back together and how everything is just like everything you're just like literally it leaves you gobsmacked the twists wild all over all over the place wild you do not expect them you do not see them but it ends off on the most absolute bang like boof yes yes girl really really good really really love this book uh rated it to five out of five it was one of my favorites of the year the next book that i've got here is this one which is the book that made me cry Okay, this is Frederick Bachman's A Man Called Uva or Over or something like that. And it's actually the movie is now on Netflix, which is so exciting. No, it's not the it's not the man called Uva, it's uh, Anxious People, also by Frederick Bachman, which is on Netflix. But the movie A Man Called Uva is also found online. You can find it. I watched it a while ago really really good so so good clearly depicts what happens in the book as well this is a heart-wrenching emotional gut pulling just beautiful book that follows the life of a man called Uva who recently lost his wife at the beginning of the book but the book is set in two dual time spans where we are seeing Uva's current life and we are also seeing his life growing up um, following the relationship with his wife from how they met to the things that they would share together as a couple and all of that. Um, really, really beautiful. But Uva's just like a really grumpy man who lives in an estate of like a, a, a townhouses, um, complex, a complex where he just cannot stand any of his neighbors he just wants to keep to himself he just wants to live his best life okay he's gone through a traumatic thing about losing his wife and the beginning of the book actually uh, something huge happens after that which is it would be a spoiler if I shared it so I'm not gonna do that because it it threads its way right throughout the novel but it follows the life of Uva and his neighbors and you seeing his interactions with his neighbors as much as he's so grumpy he's such a good good man with such a kind heart and a kind soul oh my god you can't help but not love him it's really really a great book and it just follows his day-to-day -day life with his neighbors and the friendships that they develop and um how just uh, grief through grief and loss new relationships and friendships can be formed and you just don't feel so alone in the world ah oh! <laughs> I loved 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 this book and I again I think I also rated this one a five out of five and yeah definitely do check it out if it's something that you would like to check out the next book is uh, this one and I spoke about this one so so much and this is not a fiction novel this is a non-fiction memoir this is in the dream house by carmen maria machado the reason why this book is in here is because i loved the writing in this book i loved not only the writing i also appreciated that the author brought to the forefront abuse in same-sex relationships because the story that we fo follow of the author and her life we follow her life with um, being in a relationship with a very tumultuous um, woman and she's a lesbian and we see that and we see how emotional abuse we see how psychological abuse happens as well in same-sex relationships where people are even afraid to leave but like she writes it so well because she annotates it and she you have you've got end notes in there and at some point you feel like you're reading a fantasy novel because she adds a fantasy kind of elements to it then at some point she adds disney elements to it it's so brilliantly executed that you wouldn't think you you feel like you're reading a novel you feel like you are reading a fiction novel about this couple that's going through it when in actual fact you're reading about the author's life which is ah uh, by far the best writing i have Yo. This year there were two authors who stood out for me in terms of their writing and Carmen Maria Machado was one of them. The other author I'll show you just now. Wow. Definitely pick this up. Definitely pick this up. You'd be doing the Lord's work. You'd be doing the Lord's work. Let me have a drink. 
Ah, uh, this is probably on the top three, but it's not in the top three in the list, but definitely high up there in my top 10. Uh, this is under the Udala Trees by Chinelo Okparanta, who is a uh, Nigerian author, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. And this follows the life of Ijoma, who is a young Igbo child around the time of 1960, around the Nigerian Civil War. And the book opens with the war happening and uh, Ijeoma gets separated from her parents. Her father passes away uh, in this time and her mother needs to go and source work and whatever. And in this time, Ijeoma gets sent to a different town to stay with friends of her parents. And in that time, this is where the story develops. This is a story about identity. This is a story about sexuality. This is a story about, you know, finding yourself and your journey. But there's also a lot of religious patriarchy in the story. There's a lot of religious... Um, symbolism a lot of references to the bible in the story that some people who might not be too religious um might not quite enjoy about this book however i i saw how it weaved into the storyline because in trying to find her identity and falling in love with another girl she it puts into questions all the things that she has learned from her parents about how it's an abomination and how it's going against religion and law and all of that and it puts her in such a difficult position emotionally um to whether she wants to you know is she is she really, is she doing something wrong? And if she is doing something wrong, can God give her a sign and all of this? And um, she eventually reconnects with her mother and this happens. She has a back and forth with her mother um, and her mother brings in the re religious patriarchy around all of this, but it's heartfelt. It's a beautiful story of love, young love, grown love, self-love, identity like d going on your life journey it's just it was one of the best ones and i feel like this is a book that i would definitely reread over and over and over again at least once a year i would definitely reread this book um it reminded me so much so of um the death of Vivek OG because that was another uh novel about love and um self what self-love and uh the journey to finding yourself and your sexuality and identity very very similar uh in those aspects but a very very good book and then a recent one which i finished recently is the burning girls by cj tudor now this one got lucky it made it it made it right in there but i really enjoyed this book there were moments where i felt like the book was just dragging and there were moments where i felt like there were just too many characters in the book where I was just like, but, but do we need that person in the book? Um, I'm not quite sure if we need that person in the book. Um, but aside from that, it was absolutely phenomenal. A really enjoyable read that kept me on my toes. And if you know me and you follow me for a while, you know that thrillers are my favorite type genre of books. And this is, I keep biting myself. I do not know what's going on. I think it's because I'm nervous. I've got I've got a show to attend later on today. Anyway, it's fine. Um, so this is The Burning Girls by CJ Tudor. I think I'm also speaking really fast. This follows the life of a vicar by the name of Jack. What's her name? Jack Brooks. And she starts off as a vicar in central London, but then gets posted off into a small town called uh, Ch Chapelcroft. Yep, Chapel Croft. Um, and as soon as she gets to the town and she's posted into this town to be the vicar of this town, to lead the chapel, to lead the community. But as soon as she gets there, she finds out that um, she got there knowing that the, the vicar of that town had already passed away. But as soon as she gets there, she finds out how he passed away. And she finds out that uh, he had committed suicide. This is, this is all part of this. I'm not giving anything away. And um, so... 
But as soon as they get there, her and her 15-year-old daughter, strange things start happening. Uh, little twig dolls are left outside the chapel and outside their home. And people, things, funny things are happening. Her daughter is starting to see uh, visions of uh, burning girls. Gents, how the twists happen, who's behind all these twigs and all of the things that are set up there to frighten uh the new vicar and her daughter is wild but it's really really enjoyable it kept me going it was a beautiful ride and i enjoyed it so so much um i was checking the time sorry i enjoyed it so so much and i highly recommend it if you are looking for a book that you can read quick 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 fast quick fast in three days one of my most exciting books of uh <laughs> Every time I look at the cover and I see that it's been wrapped, I think of my friend because she covered it with, um, yeah, wrapping paper, uh, like the white. Anyway, uh, one of my most exciting favorite books of the year that I enjoyed in terms of so entertaining, so wonderful is The Polygamist by Sunyati. Now, personally, I feel like Sunyati and I are best friends truthfully we're best twitter friends okay because i follow her on twitter and she follows me and sometimes i retweet her stuff and she retweets or she'll comment on some of my tweets and i'm just like yes because we're best friends forever okay <laughs> but uh this is one of the favorite books my my number one by sunyati is definitely a family affair however this one was very entertaining as well difficult subjects in this one too uh but it's it is what it says this is the polygamist which follows the life of jonasi and his four wives uh some of which know about the others and the others don't know about you know what I'm saying? So he is a billionaire banking tycoon who just cannot keep his in his pants. And because of that, a lot of family dynamics and family struggles, problems start to arise with um, Jonasi and uh, his partners, his wives. You get to see how he treats them each very differently um he's got respect for the one and the other and all of this blah 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 but because he just can't keep his in his pants he just does what he wants to do and he's a rich and powerful man and it gives indication to uh you know the the, the stereotype but also maybe some truth to it as to uh what powerful men can get away with and um and how they just attract a lot of attention yes but they can get away literally with doing terrible things uh to women or other people all because of their wealth and their power really really good book uh touches on really really difficult subject uh, subjects as well such as which I'm going to write there, and uh, abuse and violation of women and their rights. So there's a lot of GBV in this, okay? Uh, so that's really hard to read. But aside from that, it's quite entertaining, quite entertaining. It's 191 two pages of jam-packed entertainment. I finished this in a day, and I really, really loved it. So get it. One of my favorite books this was the other writer that I fell in love with. This is Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. And I loved this book because I read this book at a really difficult time mentally, mental health wise. I really wasn't going through it. And I remember vlogging that uh, vlog where I spoke about it and I cried about it. And I was starting this book in that vlog. And man, did I love this book. This uh, follows the life of Talia. If I'm not mistaken, oh my god, let me not let me not mess this up, Talia. Yes, this follows the life of Talia, who the book opens with Talia being detained in a detention center, and she escapes because she needs to quickly get to uh, Bogota so she can uh, get on a plane and join her family in the United States. Her father is in Colombia with her, and her mother and her sister and her brother are in the United States. So they're trying to, um, chase the American dream, but also to be all together and live together in, uh, the United States. But of course they come across a lot of problems along the way. And it also, it's set in a dual time span where you see, um, the life of Talia currently and her family, but you also see, uh, the love story that blossoms and blooms between, uh, Mario, the father, 
Mauro and Elena. Mauro the father and Elena uh, Talia's mother. And you see the story of how they were fighting uh, a country that was going through a lot of civil unrest and fighting to take their children to live in the United States in search for a better life and in search for the American dreams to give their children a chance at a better life. But at the same time, very, very difficult when papers are a problem and all of that. So I really, really enjoyed reading this uh, to see the perspective of families who try to get into the United States from places like Colombia and Mexico and all the other um, countries that surround uh, the U.S., try to get into the U.S. for a, a chance at a better life, but the struggles that they encounter along the way, the difficult journeys that they encounter along the way, and essentially just really the power dynamics of when what happens when they do get to um, the U.S. and how they are treated as foreigners and immigrants and all of that. Wow, it is just profoundly written it's such a beautiful book it's such a beautiful book and it gives an insight onto the other side of um just the people who enter into the u.s or live in the u.s uh who are not um originally u.s citizens so really loved it it was beautiful 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 another horror novel that i loved and i also vlogged this is the year of the witching this is by alexis henderson this kept me on my toes Honey, this one had me going, okay? This one had me going crazy. And this one follows the life of Emmanuel, who is a mixed race child. Her father is a black man and her mother is a white woman. And she grows up in a small town of, of Bethel, called Bethel, born on the fringes, just outside Bethel. and. She grows up to her mother, her father being killed and lynched once the community found out that he had impregnated a white woman and the mother also dies giving birth to Emmanuel. So it follows the life of Emmanuel living in this town where mixed race or black people are frowned upon. They're just not, you know, she lives with her family and something happened to Emmanuel's mother in the woods when she was pregnant and when she came out, things started happening to Emmanuel as she grew up. Uh, so Emmanuel finds herself in the dark woods one day and she comes out of these woods. She witnesses something in these woods and then she comes out of these woods carrying a book that once belonged to her mother. Once that happens, things start happening in the town. Okay, really freaky, freaky things that start happening in the town that are surrounded by... The, 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 the prophets of this town, the religious ma male figures of this town, and uh, it was hella, hella shocking, but really enjoyable. It is a horror novel, so there are difficult scenes to read in here, and also very, very uh, religious in terms of its religious patriarchy. There's a lot of father, brother, mother kind of things and uh, religious um, statements that are made in this book. So if you're not a fan of that, don't read it. But if you don't mind, read this book. If you want another book that's going to get you going, quick, quick, clap, clap, quick, quick, read this book. This is His Only Wife by Peace Ajo Adzo Midi. Midi. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Um, this is essentially, it follows the wife of the, la, the wife. It follows the life of Afi who marries her husband in absentia okay she is a young girl who grows up in a small village and she her mother sets her up with this wealthy young man because her mom is friends with the, the with the man's mom okay and the husband doesn't attend his wedding. So the book opens with Afi getting ready for her wedding and her family members are there and the husband's family is there and what, 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 but the husband himself is not there. So she gets, he, he doesn't attend his own wedding. Uh, but then she moves into uh, the husband's place and all of that, one of his condos. The husband comes from a very well-off family. Um, the mother is quite the matriarch, very, very controlling. She's the one who set up this marriage only because she wanted to be able to pick his husband's wife. Okay. She wanted to be able to pick her son's wife. I'm sorry, I'm speaking so fast. 
um but it's really really good you start to see the dynamics afi also entered into this uh, arranged marriage only because her family was struggling and she felt like marrying into a wealthier family is going to help things get better for her own family uh in the in, in the long run and she did that but she wanted to do things the right way to love on her husband and be with her husband and then she finds out that her husband has another woman and at this point it becomes another problem you know and very very entertaining very very enjoyable in actual fact i'd love to read this one again it's a really really good book that is well well written as well so so entertaining and then the last book is the vanishing half which i'll put here it's over there but i just want to finish the video already the last book is the vanishing half which i do feel i read in january i'm pretty sure i read it in january i loved it that was probably also top top three along with uh under the udala trees the vanishing half and i can't decide which one would be the the third one uh but i absolutely love the vanishing half it follows the life of twin sisters stella and okay oh my god uh, it follows the life of i'm so terrible at this it follows the life of stella and um desiree <laughs> it follows the life of Stella and Desiree Vine, who are two identical twin sisters who grew up in a small town just outside Texas, I think, which is called Mallard. It's a fictional town, but um, they grow up there and at 15, 16, they decide to run away because they do not want the small town life and what have you. But they are so light, so light in complexion that they can pass as white that's how fair they are in complexion and uh, one of the twin sisters decides to pass as white gets married to a white man has a white daughter where the other twin sister decides to marry a black man and has a black daughter lo and behold as they grow up as time goes on and on and on uh, the children's lives intertwine and interweave in the strip you know how they met was the strangest way for me um but i love this book and it's it's phenomenally written do you understand when i say carmen maria machado this is the next one and then the other one that i said is really well written as well like gents infinite country they are so 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 well written this one reads like it's, it's the symbolism behind it, the lyrical reading. It's just beautiful. It's smooth. It just, oh, wow, wow. Um, so I love this one because it tackles the obvious issues of colorism. It tackles um, issues of uh, race, racism. It tackles issues of um, transgender, LGBTQI, a plus <laughs> representation in this book it is really a well-rounded beautiful this book. was really really good amazing brit bennett did a fantastic job with this novel this is the novel that this is one of those novels that you'll never give away you'll never even borrow to somebody to read you would actually rather buy it for somebody but this and i remember highlighting so many points in the book and all of that ah oh, this is another one that i would definitely read definitely read you guys enjoyed the video if you have please subscribe and do join the jk fam i would appreciate having you here i'm thinking of resurrecting my book club for uh, 2022 but if i do that i'm gonna need somebody to help me run it because at this point yeah i can't take on too much okay i've already got too much on my plate and i would need somebody to help me run it and to help run the instagram page and all of that if you are somebody who might consider something like that who might have the time who might want to do it it will be a virtual book club online thing um and you'd be keen to do it with me let me know drop me an email but you must be committed to the cause, gents. K. Okay? I know I tend to be busy, but I commit to my book club commitments. Um, but I'm thinking of doing that. So if you're keen on doing it with me, drop me an email. My email address is in my description box. Those are my favorite top 10 2021 novels that I read. And I'd love to know which were some of your favorites. Let me know. And aside from that that's it i feel like i've been talking for so long now i'm gonna go and i'll see you in the next video don't forget subscribe follow the channel also follow me on instagram would love to see you there i'll see you soon bye